Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today's build is going to be a very special one. A lot of people have asked me after this build, the Copper Damascus Bowie, could I remake this blade for them? I've probably turned down hundreds of people, literally, uh, because I don't like to redo blades that I've done on the channel because people want to see something new. But this one was a special circumstance. I've changed the blade a bit. Uh, I made it a hunting knife style. But a viewer, Tim Sims, reached out to me, and it's his dad's, his dad Jim, there's Jim, it's his dad's birthday, his 90th birthday. And Jim used to work in a copper mine for 30 years. So Tim really wanted to get that knife for his father. So that's what I've agreed to do. And there's so many other similarities. Jim's birthday is the same as my son's birthday. And Jim was also in the Navy, and my stepson is currently serving in the Navy. So we're going to do something special in the sheath to commemorate that. So join me, folks. Let's get to this build. So for this build, it's going to be similar to the Copper Damascus Bowie. We're going to start with some Damascus. This Damascus I had from a previous project, but this time we're going to twist it. We're going to use that as the cladding. We're going to use this piece of 80 CRV for the core, and of course, the copper between them. I've welded some rebar onto these pieces of Damascus. Now they're going in the forge. Then I'm gonna round them out and we're gonna put them in the press and twist them. And folks, I'm just showing you the process on one of the bars because it's identical and I didn't want to have to show you both. I realized after I rounded this out that I really needed it to be a little longer so it was easier to twist. Now what I'm doing is squaring off both ends and this is so I can get a wrench on this to be able to twist it. You'll see in a second I didn't spend enough time on this step. On this first heat, it twists okay. It's on the second heat where I start to run into problems. What's happening now is I've rounded off that square part with the wrench, so as I'm twisting it, it keeps coming off. After flattening out the end again, now I have a really good grip on it and I can really twist it well. Jeez, Dad, that looks like a lot of work. Now that we have the Damascus all twisted up nice, it's time to flatten it back out so we can have a billet we can use in our blade construction. I had the Damascus all twisted and then re-flattened. I've taken it to the surface grinder and, uh, and then just cut billets out of it. Uh, got it all stacked up with the copper and now we're ready to weld it. It's important to weld all the seams here just in case you get it a little too hot and you melt out the copper we don't want it leaking out. Now it's time to set the welds with some pressure and then we're going to draw out this billet until it's big enough we can form our knife out of. Many people ask me how I get such a cool pattern in the copper. This is how, these aggressive rounding dies. Every time you press down, that's going to create one of those little valleys. Thank you. 
Here it is after forging. It's about a quarter inch thick, but after I take the scale off it, it'll be uh, around 3 16 maybe a little less, which is just where we want it. Um, I've already traced the pattern, uh, scribed it with a pen, so let's go cut it out. Now I've done the shape and the profile of the knife, I'm going to remove all that scale with an angle grinder because it just eats up belts and belts are expensive. I'm getting the blade perfectly flat on the surface grinder. I've also etched the edge just to make sure that I keep the core in the center. Now it's time to drill the holes for the pins. I'm going to be using 8 inch copper pins on this knife. And now I'm drilling some more holes just to remove some weight from the handle. I'm going to take this opportunity to answer a few questions that come up during the copper Damascus Bowie build. First off, a few people asked, once you sharpen this for a while, aren't you going to reach the copper? Here's a picture that shows the cross section of the layers in the knife. Once the bevels are ground in, it's going to look like this. If you were to keep sharpening, you're just going to move that bevel up, exposing more of the core. You'll never reach the copper. The other question I get all the time is, is this really going to be a strong enough knife? You can't weld copper. Well, we're not really welding. Welding means you're melting both metals together. Here we're more brazing. And brazing is over 70,000 PSI in tensile strength. So the copper bond is very strong. Plus we have a high carbon core all through the blade. Another interesting little tidbit, the Blade Magazine Knife of the Year for this year, overall knife of the year, has copper in it. This blade came out of the quench perfectly straight and perfectly hard. Here's the blade after heat treat and temper. Um, looking pretty good. Uh, you can see that rainbow tinge in the copper, but that's all going to come off because we got to do the final grinding now. I've got a Broadback Revolution 120 grit uh, belt on there to uh, put in the bevel. Then I'll probably move to the P-Flex 120 grit and then up the grits. Let's go. Now I'm doing the flats on the surface grinder just to get a nice clean finish. Now I'm moving on to these P-Flex belts that are super flexible, great for doing plunge lines. And now everybody's favorite part, a little bit of hand sanding. And now for my maker's mark. These are stencils that I buy from IMG Electromark. And uh, this is just a car battery charger set at 10 amp. So that works really well. I've never had a problem doing that. So that's what I use.
I have the blade hand sanded to 800 grit. I put my maker's mark in there. Now I'm going to turn to do the handle. Um, so here's a better look at the handle material. Uh, it's got this copper mesh in it, which I think will look amazing with the uh, copper motif. This is a great trick to put a dome on your pins, just to get them to go in easier. Just run your drill in reverse, put them on your grinder, away you go. Okay, I'm ready to etch this blade. I've now got it hand sanded to a thousand. I've cleaned it off with acetone, uh, and now it's going to go into the ferrochloride. Uh, this is a special batch of ferrochloride I use just for copper knives because the copper will contaminate it and turn other blades uh, a copperish color, which you don't always want. So I'm going to get it wet and I'm going to dip it in the ferrochloride. I'll probably leave it there for a few minutes and then check it. You see, what will tend to happen is the copper will start to bleed like this, and that's when you need to take it out. Now I'm putting a little bevel on the front of the knife scales. Then we're going to go and hand sand those to a thousand, and then we'll do our glue up. Okay, we're ready to glue up the handle. I've got everything cleaned with acetone. Uh, I've got my uh, two-part epoxy ready. I've got a little bit of acetone and Q-tips to wipe off the excess. I haven't used resin scales in a while and I forgot how quick they grind. I almost let them get away from me at one point. Here I'm doing some final contouring of the handle, getting ready for the hand sanding. I'm going to bypass the hand sanding in the video, you guys have seen that before. So there's the completed knife, folks. Uh, I had a really good time doing this one. Uh, Jim, happy birthday. I hope you enjoy this knife. 
Uh, say thank you to your son for reaching out to me, and I hope you enjoy it for years. Thanks, folks. We'll see you on the next one.